Hi guys, yasas ke kalas tirtate to another episode of Dimitra's Dishes. Today we're making kreatopita. Kreatopita is a Greek pie that's made with layers of buttered phyllo. I mean, that's already sounding delicious. The filling is a ground beef sort of a stew. It's so simple to make. I usually have ground beef stew, a uh, minced meat stew in the freezer because it, I put it in so many different recipes. And then I also add some cheese and roasted red peppers. The whole thing is delicious. Let's get started. All right, so we're gonna start off by finely chopping an onion. So I'm going to add it to my pot um, with about a quarter of a cup of olive oil. And you want to cook this over medium, medium high heat for about eight minutes or so until the onions are nice and soft and golden. I also like to add a little pinch of salt to the onions, season every step of the way and you'll have a really flavorful meal. Anytime I'm making a, a meat sauce, I usually like to make a double batch of it because it usually takes a little bit pretty much the same time, maybe a little bit longer, but you can just take the second, the second half of it and let it cool down, put it in an airtight container, freeze it, and it stays fresh for up to three months and you can use it in so many things, pasta dishes, um, pastizio, moussaka, just in really anything. Cook, cook it as a stew with potatoes over rice, I'm not gonna keep going because you, you can just look through my channel. I have so many recipes on it. And once the onions are nice and soft, we're gonna move on to the next, next step. Okay, next you're gonna add five or six garlic cloves that, are, that have been grated and just put them in there and stir them around for a few seconds just so that way they can warm through. And then I'm adding two pounds of ground beef, but you can use ground chicken, ground turkey, or ground lamb, or any ground meat that you have. I'm gonna add a teaspoon of salt, some black pepper, crushed red pepper flakes if you like them, if not, leave them out. And I have a 15 ounce can of crushed tomatoes. You can uh, puree your own tomatoes. Fresh tomatoes will work too. And then I have some paprika. This is sweet paprika. You can put about a tablespoon of that in here. Don't add smoked paprika. If you don't have the paprika, just leave it out. Smoked, papri smoked paprika is gonna give it a smoky flavor and we're not going for that in this recipe. And we're just gonna cook this meat down for about 30 minutes or until um, a nice thick sauce is made. So the meat sauce is ready. It took 30 minutes for this to be done. I did go in and I added one more can, one more 15 ounce can of tomatoes just because it looked like there wasn't really enough sauce in it. This is definitely over two pounds of ground beef, but for one and a half to two pounds, one can is usually enough. It just depends how saucy you like it. Once it's done, taste it and add more salt and pepper if it's necessary. And then go ahead and add a full teaspoon of oregano, dried oregano, you could add thyme, you could add fresh parsley. I did the oregano. I'm gonna set it aside because now we're gonna assemble the pie. All right, so I'm using a pound of number four phyllo that's been thawed out overnight in the refrigerator and then I left it at room temperature in the morning. So it's been out for like two or three hours. You wanna leave it in its packaging so that way it does not dry out. I have a big pan over here. This is the same size as a sheet pan is, let me show you. So it's about the same size. So you could definitely make this in a sheet pan. I like these deeper pans. It's a stainless steel one that I found in a Greek specialty food store. They use, they use specialty, not specialty. They use stainless steel pans in Greece. So they're really commonly found in um, Mediterranean uh, specialty food stores. I've looked online and I have found it on Amazon, something similar. I'll try to link in the blog post. Anyway, but you can use um, any baking pan that you like. So um, I'm spreading a layer of breadcrumbs. This helps catch uh, the juices to keep the pie nice and dry and crisp on the bottom. And now I've melted three sticks of butter. That's three, uh, three quarters of a pound of butter. And I did use salted butter this time, but I know overseas, uh, sometimes salted butter is a little too salty. So you, you can just use unsalted butter and put like a quarter teaspoon of salt in there. That'll do the trick. And we're gonna take one sheet of phyllo at a time. I'm gonna put one on the bottom. And I'm gonna drizzle some butter on it. 
We always drizzle butter between each layers. That just gives a lot of flavor, helps it stay crispy. Oh, before we start doing this, <laughs> I'm gonna separate the phyllo into two batches, like two equal portions. I'm just gonna take this portion and leave it for the top because I'm gonna make the top a little bit decorative. I started doing that recently ever since I made my tiropita. And I just love the texture that it gives. It makes it really crispy and it also looks so pretty. And I'm just gonna go around the pan one sheet at a time, just lining it, putting um, half of the phyllo in or as much as covers the bottom. And then the rest is gonna extend outside of the pan. And just put the butter in there. Keep in mind that sometimes phyllo is stuck together. If it's stuck together, don't try to separate it. Just use the two sheets that are stuck together. It'll be perfectly fine. And if you're using a thicker phyllo, like a country style phyllo, then you're gonna have fewer sheets. So just line it accordingly. You can use any phyllo that you prefer. Okay, that looks like enough for the bottom. I'm gonna save these remaining sheets for the top layers. Now, it's up to you. If you like a thicker bottom crust of phyllo, you can add more layers. If you like more crunchy, crunchiness on the top, then you could save more of the layers for the top. Now, this is optional. I'm using feta cheese, and I always buy it in, the blo in block form. If you've been following me, you know. And I always put way more than the recipe calls for, so um, I'm gonna put a layer of feta on the bottom because I love it, <laughs> but you don't have to do this if you're you know, limiting how much cheese you eat. And then I'm gonna put the meat sauce on top. There's another um, traditional pie in Greece that's also known as kreatopita, which is another meat pie. And that's uh, made with um, lamb. Uh, it's basically like cooked lamb. It's not a minced meat or a ground beef like this. If you want me to teach you how to do that one, let me know in the comments section and I'll um, do that recipe next. Not next, as soon as possible. <laughs> a lot of holiday recipes are coming up. Anyway, I made an extra, I made extra meat sauce, so I'm just gonna put this much, I'm gonna make an even layer. Keep in mind that if you're using a smaller pan, it's gonna, it's gonna be a thicker layer, obviously, right? And then all of the phyllo that's extended outside of the pan, we're gonna fold it in. And each time we fold it in, we're gonna just, you know, butter it. <laughs> oh boy. I only make these mistakes when I'm doing videos, but we're gonna fix this up. <laughs> Almost like, I don't know. I don't know what happens. Anyway, before you cover the filling, we have to put the, the rest of the fillings in. So the rest of the fillings require two roasted red peppers or more. You can put however much red pepper in this that your heart desires. I love this roasted red pepper because it's smoky, it's tender, it's just, it just has so much flavor. Let's set this aside for a second. And then I have some mozzarella cheese that I buy in block form. You can use Gouda cheese, you can use mozzarella, Gruyere, Kefalotiri, Kefalograviera, whatever your favorite cheese is. And this is still slightly frozen because I buy my mozzarella in block form from Costco and then I just cut it into these just big uh, portions and then I freeze them. I took it out this morning, but it's still slightly on the frozen side. I'm gonna carefully cut slices around it. I made this the other day with Munster cheese and it came out so good. Basically what you're looking for is a cheese that melts well and gets nice and stringy. So now, the remaining feta cheese gets crumbled on top. You can put some olives in here. You can put some, uh, maybe some jalapenos, sliced jalapenos if you like a little bit spice, a little bit of spice. You can put any roast, if you have leftover roasted veggies, you can put those in here. Okay, and then just sprinkle the um, roasted red peppers on top. And then the mozzarella. So much is going on in my mind when I'm doing these videos and sometimes I'm multitasking, so I forget a lot of stuff. But you know what, it's always good because if this is your first time making something and you make a mistake, 
watching me, <laughs> you'll know that it's still going to turn out fine. OK, that looks good. Now we're going to put the phyllo back on top. And when we cut into this, you'll never know this happened. Here we go. Now I'm going to set this tray aside for a second because I don't have much space to show you what I'm doing. I have to move things around. So I'll do a little bit at a time. Now to make the top, I like to make like an accordion type topping. So I just take one phyllo sheet at a time and I just scrunch it up like this. And I'm just going to set it aside, get them all done. Just like that. This is going to add so much texture and crunch and it looks so pretty once it's baked. Now normally if I'm doing this without shooting a video, I would just scrunch up each one and then put it on top of the pie. But I don't have any room to do this, so I'm just doing this step first, so that way you can see how it's done. Now I'm going to put these on top. Put them on all together. Look at that. And then all this remaining butter is going to get brushed and poured all over the top of the pie. Perfect. If you want to sprinkle some sesame, sesame seeds on top, be my guest. My oven is preheated to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. I think that's about 200 degrees Celsius. This is going to go onto the middle rack and it's going to bake for about 45 minutes to an hour or until the whole thing is beautifully golden on top. I'm going to show you what it looks like as soon as it comes out. So it took 55 minutes in my oven for the pie to be ready. It's beautifully golden on top. Then you want to make sure you take it out and you let it sit at room temperature for about 15, 20 minutes so the steam can settle and it could be at a temperature where you can serve it without burning your mouth. <laughs> and then it's time to like cut it into portions. It should be super crispy. Hear that sound? That is the sound that you want to hear. Crispiness. That's what phyllo is good for. And then go ahead and put a serving on a plate, serve some tzatziki on the side, a salad. That's really all you need. Time to take a taste. Mm. So much flavor, so little effort. Put your favorite veggies in here. Let me know how you're going to make it in the comment section. I love reading your recreations and even seeing pictures. So share them with me on Facebook and on Instagram. This thing is delicious. The holidays are right around the corner. This is a great dish to serve if you're having family over. It's also good. You can make this ahead, assemble the whole thing, wrap it tightly in plastic and keep it in your freezer. You could make this a month before you serve it. When you're ready to serve it, pop it in the oven, a preheated oven until it's nice and golden. And you know, life is easy and delicious at the same time. The exact measurements are on the website, dimitrosdishes.com. If you want to learn how to make my famous spanakopita, you're going to want to click over here and I'll see you right over there. Yes, us.